Hello good people, welcome to Keep Left, your old car guide to all things cars and all things automotive. As always, my name is Kev, the host who knows most about cars. And today we have a review of another Honda. So one, yes, it's another Honda. And two, no, I'm not sponsored by Honda in any way. I just think they have something to claim in this automobile industry. And it's worth thinking about, isn't it? So now we have today a 2008 Honda Airwave. Keep it locked. The Honda Airwave represents the station wagon family of this of the Honda family. And if you think about it, this car is the middle child in terms of family cars in the Honda family. The generations of this particular model only had one generation spanning from 2005 up to 2010. After that, it was discontinued only to be succeeded by the Honda Fit Shuttle for various reasons. And some of them was that it was a middle child and obviously <laughs> no one loves the middle child. But if you think about it, the Honda Fit caters for the smaller uh, families and the, 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 just the beginning of the spectrum. And if you want for a bigger family, in the family cars of the Honda family, you will go for the Honda Stream. Both of them catering for the different spectrums of the family. And this, as the middle child, often went unnoticed. Did Honda make a big mistake by discontinuing this car? Let's look through and see. Under the bonnet of the Honda Airwave is an interesting engine. They have two different types of engines, both of them being 1.5 litre engines and very economical engines. The first type of engine uh, employs the IDSI for engine management, which is intelligent dual sequential ignition, which employs two spark plugs per cylinder this was an uh, this was a tactic to ensure that the engine is able to utilize all the unburnt fuel during combustion the second engine employs a very very familiar culprit called the vtec vtec basically is variable valve timing and leaf electronic control if you haven't watched uh, my video on uh, VTEC engines, I have a video on the Honda CRV and the Honda Fit. A link, uh, I'll put a link on this video so that you can watch that. They go further into explaining how VTEC works. So this monster called VTEC enables you to get both spectrums off the power band. You get power and economy at the same time. And this basically happens because the camshaft have two uh, load systems like this sort of, uh, two load profiles, sorry about that which ensure that you're able to have the cylinders open for longer and uh, close uh, a bit uh, earlier. So this gives you much more power. Ideally, they, they go into giving the cars a bit more economy, and that's what Honda does. And this is the second reason why this car was discontinued. If you think about it, there are Honda Fit that come with this particular engine. In terms of gearboxes, these cars come with two different gearboxes, the very familiar CVT gearbox and an auto gearbox, which is not so common in these cars. Uh, the auto ones are found in the North American markets. In terms of uh, trim packages for this car, you have two different trim packages that are employed. One is the G model, which basically is the basic trim of this car. And then you have the L model, which basically represents a far much more equipped model of this car, which for starters, you will get a sunroof with a panoramic uh, roof. The other things you can get as things like fog lights, which come standard in the L packages. Aside from that, these cars are very simple and utilitarian. The instrument cluster is very simple. Again, going with the nature of this car has to be very serviceable and utilitarian. You have your, your rev counter and your speedometer. Aside from that, you have the gauge for your temperature and your fuel level. 
which is very important. They stick to maintaining things very simple in order to have this car being very serviceable. The exterior of the Honda Airwave again is very simple. Uh, some things that come and uh, help out this car is because it's a station wagon, you obviously have this uh, rear wiping uh, wiper, which helps a lot because of the shape of the car. It comes standard with this uh, well-placed spoiler which necessarily isn't for aerodynamics, but also just to smoothen out the shape of this car. If you look at the shape of this car, I think it's better than what we have as uh, station wagons in this category. I like this shape. The headlights are actually very big and they also help in proper illumination on the roads. They come standard with halogen headlights. The center grille is very simple and aerodynamic. It maintains a very smooth upward curve to it, which I think helps into the styling of this car. Very important. This is why you buy the Honda Airwave. The space in uh, the space at the back is very big. There are few cars that have this level of space. And this I'm talking about cars generally, SUVs, uh, sedans, uh, pickup trucks, this car has a lot of space. This space is aided by the fact that this car uh, at the back, you have a uh, proper placement of the tank, which I'll explain later on. And this car comes with a feature called Magic Seats. I've done a review of a car that has Magic Seats, the Honda Fit. Watch that video. I'll put a link on this video for the same. And the Magic Seats help to redefine how we look at space. And that's something I like about Hondas. If you come to the center seats, one thing I like about this is the center opening uh, armrest uh, stroke cup holders, which is very nice. And one thing that I've always featured in my reviews is we can actually have someone sitting in the middle of this. Most manufacturers uh, go around trying putting a very huge transmission tunnel and hence you can't sit here. But because uh, this uh, uh, the, the, the back floor of this car is almost flat, you see someone can sit here very comfortable. I like subtle things that Honda do in their interiors that help you to know that this car is uh, actually putting the clients into their thoughts. For example, if you just come close, there is this uh, tow hook which will help you to actually put some light luggage in. Uh, for example, if you've bought canned items and you have them in a paper bag, instead of having them lie down, you can just have them here. This one has a maximum weight of 3 kgs. Such things help you to know that this is actually a utilitarian car. So now, let's look at how the seats move so that to give you space. So these seats move in two ways. The first way is obviously when you come to the backrest, there's a lever here, you pull it, and the seat will come down to lie flat. This helps into increasing the amount of boot space. Aside from that, this seat can further move some more. So on... Uh, on the sitting part just pull it up to there and you see this increases the space i've featured this in the honda fit and you can actually put here something that uh, you don't want to move a lot because the boot only has few harnesses and just to show you how much space is here i'll just have a seat so that you can see not that there's anyone who'll ever be in this position, but it's a funny position. <laughs> but you see the amount of space here is good. It means you can carry a very huge pot, a flower pot here. Again, very utilitarian nature of this car. Now at the boot is where the Honda Airwave comes to life. This car has much more cabin space than all of its competitors in this class. Class, It has more space than the Fielder, Crobox, the Lancer, uh, LS uh, Wagon, and finally the Nissan Wing Road. And just look at this space in terms of me. Again, no one will ever sit in this position, but you see the amount of space that is maintained. And this is ably employed by the fact that we don't have a tank below here. What we have is the spare wheel, and I'll show you in just a few minutes. Again, if I stretch the seats, you'll see the amount of space that we have. So once you have this seat lying and the other one, the amount of space you get is a lot. I can actually sleep across this just to show this. Perfect. This is more than enough space. Again, not to carry people, but your luggages and any other thing that you might want to carry here. Where they put the spare wheel again is very thoughtful. The spare wheel is there. It comes with a very small donut and this one is quite useful. 
they have a secret compartment here where you can put your jack and all other things if you look on the sides of this car you have these compartments on the side which are quite thoughtful again you can put your first aid kit and bottles of oil or uh, washer fluid uh, again as i mentioned you have these very thoughtful uh, harnesses for you to harness any luggage that you might want to put here and things that might be moving around in the boot yes so you see the amount of space is very big The drivability of the Honda Airwave is actually superb, sorry for that. And this is all thanks to the 1.5 liter engine that you have there, which is a quite able engine thanks to VTEC. And uh, this just goes to show you how much Honda think about their cars because the VTEC engine in this is able to give you power at the press of the gas pedal, which is quite unique. And VTEC engines actually come alive on the higher revolution. So this car does not kill its engine when you're doing 5,000, 6,000 revolutions per minute. Actually, this is helped by the fact that it has two lobe profiles, as I mentioned earlier on, which are hydraulically controlled. With high oil pressure, they switch to the bigger oil uh, cam, uh, lobe profiles, and with low pr oil pressure, the smaller uh, lobe profiles, which give you a lot of drivability. Again, I like the placement of the, the gear lever, which is quite unique. And again, look at the space that you get in this car. It gives you a proper seating position and a lot of leg room. Remember, while I was reviewing the back space, this was the position that I had. I haven't moved this seat, so it just goes to show you that how much space that this, this car can, it can actually carry a very big person the interior is very easy and livable it is very easy to clean which is something that you look uh, at when you're buying these utilitarian types of cars prices this car was unfortunately discontinued and which in my opinion is a mistake because this car these cars have been able to maintain their prices so well between 2005 to 2010 these cars haven't really depreciated a lot for the entry level you, you can buy them for around 500,000 kenya shillings and for the Newer models of this car, you can do anything between uh, 750 to 800,000. This is the L package of this car, which is quite a bargain if you consider the competitors in this field. I would buy this car any day over the, uh, the Toyota Fielder, which is the prime competition of this car. For reasons of, the, the Toyota Fielder is a good car in its day it's a very good car but these cars are very expensive the same category of uh, years you'll find that fielder being much more expensive again the other competitors in this category you consider is the nissan ring road which half of the time is quite unreliable if uh, not well maintained again you have the lancer uh, ls wagon which again in this market there are very few examples that are well kept and if anything not many came to africa finally you have the the golf variant which represents the european boys and as far as the european boys uh, boys go the golf uh, the station wagon model again is a good competitor but again the maintenance maintenance cost of this is very high and it's not something that you can actually call utilitarian again some of the drawbacks that you can consider in this car is the ignition coils in this actually need to be replaced uh, quite more often that, than uh, I might consider. Again, with high mileage cars, this is uh, uh, something that you need to consider. The, uh, the headlights, again, they yellow uh, quite quickly and need to be cleared because they, they give you poor visibility. And finally, uh, I like that the car is utilitarian, but the fact that it has shock absorbers at the back doesn't go to uh, adding value in terms of if you wanted to carry something heavy. But this is across the industry because, again, the fielder, again, is not leaf sprung. The air wave, the, sorry, the wing road, again, is not leaf sprung. And uh, also the variants come with shock. So it, it is across the board. This is why I believe Honda made a mistake by discontinuing this car. If you think about the only worthy competitor in this category is the Toyota Fielder. And uh, these cars have proven to be much more uh, reliable, if not equally reliable as the Toyota boys, but at a fraction of the cost that the Fielders come. And as such, I think for the African market, the Honda Airwave is a very good candidate. This, these cars are easy to use, easy to maintain good to live around and very simple again they are bigger than the fielder so it it just boggles the mind why honda discontinued it yes they have the honda fit shuttle but again the honda fit shuttle 
feels more like a Honda Fit than an Airwave. But with proper research, I'm sure they, they thought that was the best move. But in my opinion, again, this is a car that will be here years to come. Thank you so much for watching this episode. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and support this channel. Make sure you also ring on the bell icon so that you get notifications about future videos. And most of all, if you like this video, show some love, give it a huge thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching and until next time it is, peace.